I think the most important thing, the most generalizable thing, is that students need to take ownership of the learning process. Too often we get in a situation where it's uh, us passively providing the information to them. They've got to find some way to participate in that process, own it, and be accountable for it. One way that I do that right from day one is just by knowing every student's name in the class on the first day of class. When I call on a student who has never had me in a class before by name at the beginning of the first class, it sets a completely different tone in the classroom because all of the students know that they are accountable and, um, and they know that they have been recognized. And so there, I think there's a feeling of respect there too. Participation is usually 20 to 25 percent of the grade in my classes and um, you know how I define participation, um, good participation in the class is saying things that uh, or asking questions that help everyone else to learn and so it's not necessarily about just you know making your points it's about saying things that are demonstrating to me that, that you're really thinking about it, you're taking the concepts to a new place, and that you are um, interested in helping everyone else learn too, and bringing everyone else along together. And, you know, in terms of, of exams and in terms of, uh, of homeworks and papers and, and assignments, that's all, you know, there, there's a base of knowledge that I know that they've got to have, and, and that's what I'm testing on. But I think that if I limit the, the class to just those baseline things, it's pretty stark and it's pretty, um, uh, it's pretty basic and they're getting a, a much richer experience and one that's going to stay with them for a lot longer by a allowing them to have some control over what it's really about in, in the classroom time. The classroom time is the most memorable, it's the most significant, it's most important. Um, and that's sort of, you know, what all of the homework, all the outside work sort of leads up to. So the way that I run my courses is highly discussion-based and it's really dependent on the students themselves uh, participating in, in the creation of learning. So um, as we have these discussions, I have to recognize that, that I'm, uh, I'm letting go of control to some degree of, of what is going to happen at any moment in the class. Now I can do that because I don't use slides. And so it's a lot easier for me to jump around in the material. Now, in order to do that, it's really important that I know the material very well. So I have a good sense of you know, what I'm hitting now, but also you know, what I was planning to hit in 15 minutes. And so if a student makes a very strong point that relates to something that I'm going to be talking about later, you know, uh, I can either choose to table it or I can jump to that next topic and then try and cycle back around to the, to the points that I'm trying to make now and uh, so it's, it's more of an opportunistic strategy and it does require a, a lot of improvisation um, but the the value of it is that when I contextualize what I'm talking about based on what the students are bringing in now then again they're much more likely to own it and they're much more likely to recontextualize it and it's much more likely to become part of their general understanding of the topic what it also does is it, it sort of creates a feeling in the class uh, that they don't really know where the class is going to go. They, they know that, that I have a sense of where I want it to be, but they don't necessarily know how they're going to get there. Because I don't know how we're going to get there. And that's all right. <laughs>